everyone and welcome to my channel. I hope that you are all good. In today's video, we're going to be creating this blue designer inspired set of nails. And I'm also gonna be showing you guys how I encapsulate my water decals in the acrylic. So I really hope you all enjoy watching. I've already prepped and applied my tips to my Glamourless practice hand. So here I'm gonna come in and apply my thin clear acrylic base. So I'm using the CJP crystal glass for this. And as you can see, I'm just applying a small bead of acrylic. I'm not taking it all the way up to the cuticle area and I'm just taking it down to the very tip of the nail. If I was working on myself, then I usually would take it all the way up to the cuticle area. But when I'm doing a clear base on the Glamourless hand, the main purpose of it is to make sure that there's a nice smooth surface between the nail bed tip and the tip that I've applied to extend the nails. However, there are lots of reasons why an acrylic base on yourself or on a client is amazing. I always find that clear acrylic adheres the best to the natural nail plate. It's also great to have a clear acrylic base down so that you can file back to it when your client comes in for a redesign. It also stops any staining if you're using any highly pigmented colors. And it's also just giving you a really nice base and foundation to work on top of. However, you do want to keep this clear base layout nice and thin. You don't want to build up any bulk with it because you have still got to come in on top with your colors and your nail art and then building your structure and encapsulating. So just keep it as a nice thin layer. Then I'm gonna come in and start my design. So I'm gonna be applying my water decals to these two nails and they need to go over a white base to really pop. So I'm coming in with CJP coconut milk and I'm doing, I'm placing the bead down exactly the same as I would as if I was doing a baby boomer or an ombre nail because I want the water decals to have that ombre effect. So I've placed that bead down, blended out the back of it so that there's no harsh line, and then I'm making sure that the entire tip of the nail is covered. I'm then gonna repeat that process on the ring finger. So I'm gonna come in with another bead of CJP coconut milk, placing it down roughly where I want that blend to start, blending it back ever so slightly. I did place this bead a little bit too far down the nail, so that's why I didn't blend it back too much. And then I'm just patting and pulling it down towards the very tip of the nail, making sure that it's fully covered and I'm happy with the coverage. Again, with this layer of acrylic, you don't wanna be building up too much thickness because we have still got to apply our water decal and then encapsulate that in. So I'm trying to not make this layer too thick and I'm also trying to make it as smooth as I can. So then, then that way my water decal will apply nicely on the top. So that's why you can see I'm going over the acrylic a few times just to make sure it's really smoothed out. Then I'm gonna leave that white acrylic to set because you will need to make sure it's set before coming in with your decals. So I'm gonna move on and do the pointer finger and I'm pretty much doing exactly the same on the pointer finger except for I'm using this gorgeous blue color which is CJP's Aqua Marine. This color is just absolutely beautiful. It's so highly pigmented and a little bit really does go a long way. So as you can see, I'm working with quite small beads. I love this color as well because it blends out really nicely too. So it's perfect if you are wanting to create an ombre. Once again, I'm gonna do exactly the same on the little finger. So you'll see I'm coming in with a medium sized bead patting it out at the sides to begin with, just because it was a little bit wet, I decided to pull it down towards the tip first of all. And then I'm gonna flip my brush around and just blend that back. Just so that there's no harsh line. You don't want any harsh lines when you're doing anything with a ombre style. I did then decide to come in with another small bead at the tip of the nail, just to make sure that that was fully covered and fully opaque. Again, I'm still making sure this is nice and smooth, even though I'm not gonna be putting anything over the top of this, I'm just gonna come in and do the ombre. Now for our water decals. So these are from Miss Lucy. I will leave all of the links in the description box below to all of the products that I've used. So do check that out, especially if you're looking to purchase any water decals. Now for this particular set, I decided I was gonna apply my water decals with some base coat. So I'm coming in over the acrylic and applying a thin layer of my Kiki London rubber base coat. Now you don't necessarily have to do this step, but I prefer it, especially if I'm using a large size decal 
just because it's going to cure and hold in place so that when it does come to encapsulating or sorry when it does come to ombre in my acrylic over the top it's not going to move around or anything like that so what I did was I cut out my decal to size, soaked it in some room temperature water for around 20 seconds, peeled it off the backing paper, and then I'm placing it down on that wet base coat. So I haven't cured this yet. We will cure it once we've got the water decals applied. Then I'm just taking a silicone tool and really smoothing out all of the creases. You want to get this lying as nice and as flat as possible because any creases will show up at the end result. So I'm just making sure to get it as smooth as possible. I was just trimming off a little bit of excess here, which isn't 100% necessarily because I do come in and file them once I've got them cured in place. Now, like I said, I prefer doing it this way because these are larger full cover decals. So it just saves any faff if they don't 100% dry in place or I don't have to worry about moving them around. I then popped them in my LED lamp to cure for 60 seconds. So that base coat has now cured in place and that decal is not gonna be able to move at all. I'm then taking my file and just making sure to file them in slightly. So I'm removing any excess and I'm making sure there's a thin gap from the water decal and the edge of the acrylic nail, just so that we can fully encapsulate that in. And now I'm just going to come in and clean up any dust that's left from the filing. So I've got a tiny amount of alcohol on a lint-free pad and I'm very gently cleaning that up. You do want to be very careful because you don't want to ruin your water decals. Now we're going to move on to creating the ombre. So I'm coming in with CJP Obsession and this is kind of a peachy pink acrylic but it does have a slightly sheer side to it depending on how you work with it you can build it up to be a bit more opaque which is one of the reasons I love this color because it's so versatile the drier you use it or the more you build it up the more opaque you can make it but then you can work with it on that little sheer side especially for creating something like a fade which is what I'm doing here so I'm keeping it slightly wet where I want the acrylic to fade out so I do still want to be able to see some of that water decal underneath and then I'm just going to build the color up a little bit where I want there to be more coverage so down at that cuticle area I'm also because this is a core powder I'm able to build my apex up with this and then I'll just have to encapsulate from the fade down so I did feel as though I'd taken my water decals a little bit further down than I wanted to. The fade just looked a little bit unbalanced, if that made sense. So I'm just coming in with a little bit more acrylic to bring that fade slightly further down the nail. And then where I want it to blend out, you can see here, I'm just blending that acrylic out using the tip of my brush. So I'm gonna do the same here, but here I started off at the cuticle area just because I knew that I wanted a bit more coverage. So I placed my bead down, tapped it up into place around that cuticle, and then I'm just building up the coverage and fading it down over the water decal. As you can see, I'm using a really light feathery touch and I'm trying to not run my brush over the water decals too much. Sometimes depending on the water decals you're using, your monomer can work a little bit like acetone and make the water decals melt or make the image run. Now, I never had any problems encapsulating these decals, but some decals I've used in the past, I have found that. So do have a little play around maybe before you try this on a full set because it will differ depending on the brand of water decals you're using. If you do find that you have water decals where the image runs, you can apply a layer of top coat over the top of them and then buff that before coming in with your acrylic. So now that I've finished doing the ombre on the two water decal nails, I'm going to move on to the two colored acrylic nails. So I've placed my bead of obsession down, tucking it in at the cuticle area and then just blending it down. Depending on the colors I'm using and the products I'm working with, I will do my ombres slightly differently. So it does depend on the day. And if I'm a bit more confident with a color, I'll come in with a larger bead of acrylic. But if I'm not so confident on creating a good blend with the colors I'm using, then I will work in smaller beads of acrylic and start at the blend area first. Because I know that Obsession is really easy to blend with, that's why I started at the cuticle area. But you can see when I'm coming and fading over that blue, I'm really blending it out. I'm keeping my brush nice and wet so I'm able to move the acrylic to where I want it to be and to create that blend as best as I can. 
So on this now, I've placed my bead down at that blend area. So I did it slightly different on the pointer finger and I've just created the blend first before doing my cuticle area, which is 90% of the time what I will do. It kind of just depends on the day. I'm not always very consistent when it comes to applying my acrylic. Then I've placed down my cuticle bead, getting it as close to that cuticle as I can and then blending that down over the previous bead of acrylic. And I'm not popping any glitters or anything over these ombres, so I wanted to try and get them as perfect as I could. So I'm just coming in here with another small bead just to fix up that blend. And then this is what our design looks like so far. So I'm ready to come in and encapsulate. So again, when I'm working over the decals, I don't want to be running my wet brush over them too much. So I've placed down my bead of acrylic slightly wetter because we are encapsulating. And then I'm just patting and pulling it down towards the very tip of the nail. This bead didn't quite reach the end. So I'm going to come in with another bead of acrylic. You do need to make sure you are fully encapsulating the water decals with enough thickness to allow for your filing because otherwise you will file into them or remove the water decal when it does come to filing. So once again, the same on this now, I'm starting my encapsulation at that blend area because I've already built up a lot of thickness at the cuticle area with the core acrylic. So I don't need to encapsulate all the way down to the cuticle area. As you can see, I'm working with medium wet beads just so I haven't got to do too much playing around with them because when you are encapsulating with clear, you don't want to have to move and pat and press your acrylic too much because the more you play around with it, the more bubbles you're going to put into it. I'm checking the nail from all angles just to make sure that I'm happy with the thickness, happy with how my apex is built up, I'm trying to make sure that the acrylic application is as smooth and as even as possible so that there's not loads of lumps and bumps because if you have got an uneven acrylic application, you're just going to give yourself more filing to do. So especially when I'm working on my Glamalis hand, I try to minimize the amount of filing I have to do. And I'm encapsulating pretty much exactly the same on the pointer and the little finger as well. If I do feel as though any areas haven't got enough thickness, I will jump in with another small bead of acrylic just to build them up. But you don't want to be creating too overly thick nails. So when it does come to your thickness, just try and make sure that you're getting a lot of that thickness down in the apex area and running through the spine of the nail. So you'll see here, when I place my bead of acrylic down, I'm pressing a lot of that acrylic in from the sides so the thickness is running down the center of the nail. Really making sure the application is as smooth as possible. Now I did show you guys encapsulating all of the nails today, so let me know in the comments below what you think of that. I then, once I had finished encapsulating, went off camera, did all of my filing, a buffing, and gave the nails a good clean. And this is what they look like. I decided I would go for a long square shape today because I do always find square the trickiest shape to do. So once I had finished all of my filing, I'm gonna come in and top coat. So I'm top coating today using my CJP Tack Free Top Gloss. I'm just applying a thin layer of this to all of the nails. I do always find when I'm working on the Glamalis, because of the silicone hand, the dust just loves to stick to it. So it does get a little bit frustrating, even though I've cleaned away all of the dust that whenever you come to top coat in, you'll always find a little bit of dust in there. So that's why you do see I do go over the nails a couple of times just to get out any little bits that I don't want to end up cured in that top coat. Once I have finished applying my top coat, I will then pop these in to cure for 60 seconds and we'll be ready to take a look at the finished result. So let me know guys in the comments below what you thought of this set. And also please do let me know in the comments below if there's any particular designs you want to see. I have been lacking a little bit on the now and YouTube front as I've just got other things I'm really busy with right now. But I do love creating nails and videos. So as always, if you have any requests, do pop them below and I keep a little note of them all and I try and do them whenever I can. So this is the finished result. I really hope you all enjoyed watching. If you did, then please do give the video a thumbs up or leave a comment below. I hope you're all keeping safe and well and doing okay. I'm sending you all lots of love. Bye-bye.